Halita, Halita, Halita. Halito, Halito, what's happening, beautiful ones? How y'all beautiful ones doing? Hey, beloved, good to see y'all. What's up, Arthur Gray? Eric, what's happening, baby? G Luck, Johan. Oh, so I got a funny, funny, funny. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And I passed it on to someone that's even funnier than me. So I'll make sure y'all had a link when that, that little spicy meatball drops. Hi, Lana. What's up, Sam? So let's talk about this pan-African community and how they just falling apart, this whole unconscious community. Uh, I tagged Garfield. I tagged your boy from the Dagger Squad. I tagged Garfield um, this morning, you know, and I sent him a gift of, of the, uh, the catfish, the dudes from Catfish, and I tagged him in it. You know, I ain't going to talk shit about you behind your back and don't at you. That's not how we do it. So... Anyway, you know, so I tagged him and then I made a post and I, I, I did it. I did put something on his page. I took it directly to the horse, but I also had made a post on my page. So he untagged himself, but now the whole profile is completely gone. So I don't know if he just blocked me or if he took the whole page down because now you got five years of trying to uh, verify someone, right, that he cannot validate. Okay, listen to the language. He verified this particular individual who said who he whom said and she said that she was accosted by email to see if she wanted to participate in a social experiment. I don't know if y'all really caught that. If she wanted to participate in a social experiment. So these are the things that are going on. Now, Jabari. Uh, over on Sarnetta, I don't know if you remember, but he said that the American Indian uh, community was responsible for Trump being elected and had some sort of ties to, you know, the Russians and whatever secret squirrel shit that they're uh, allegedly, that they're doing, okay? Uh, regarding the Democratic Party and regarding uh, Trump being elected in the office. So now here it is that these, they're the ones that are actually being accosted by people and being used as vassals. Because as far as I'm concerned, if you are approached by someone and they're asking you to, you know, create some sort of uh, stimuli just so that they can see how people respond to this particular stimuli, you're an agent. So you see how this word kept flying around? This is the type of agent that we're speaking of when we're talking about agents. Certainly not the notice to agent is notice to principal, notice to principal is notice to agent. We're not talking about that situation. We're talking about somebody that uh, is directly placed in a situation that works against the people. Who are the people? We are the people, right? We are the ones that have uh, uh, the soft power, but we, we may not have the armies and all the other things, but we have the influence over the entire world. So we are quite powerful, way more powerful than we think they are. We make everything look good. We make everything attractive. If we wanted to walk around here with German Shepherd coats on, I guarantee you before the year is out, everybody can't wait to have a German Shepherd coat. If we walking around here in, in, in banana slides, uh, banana colored slides and say that this, this is the shit, whatever it is that we put out, everybody's going to want to be a part of. Everybody's going to want to be a part of it. That's the type of power that the American uh, Indian Negro has. We've always had it. We influence the world. So when they always have these... Um, you know, these little smart sayings and shit like we don't have no culture. We're just cultureless people and all this other shit. Why is it that they dying, swimming on boats, swimming past sharks and everything to get here to be around us such cultureless people, right? Gotta love that shit. Gotta love that shit. So I am really just trying to have a hard time figuring out, like, Garfield, you so big. You such a so-called exposer. How is it that you get in a little hot seat and your ass completely removes yourself? Or maybe you just removed me. I wasn't even going to clown too hard, but you had to know that I know. I needed to make you aware that I know. So it's time for those dudes over there, Sonetta and Black News 102, 101, whatever, to give a do some damage control because this shit is damaging. 
And the reason why it's damaging because she enchanted the entire Pan-African community based off of the same bullshit. And all of these dudes, it proved how thirsty these dudes are. That just no matter how, in the picture of the girl that they were stealing for all these years, beautiful sister, beautiful chocolate sister, right? And felt that whatever it was that they had to say, they had to steal somebody else's profile in order to get that shit across. That is fraudulent. That is fraudulent. Now, we have come across all these uh, type of situations where from Final Battle to Dr. John Henry Clark's group to all of these so-called black groups where they try to run us out of, out, run us off of this particular platform. I'm going to just say Facebook because they tried it in other areas, but their game was kind of strong uh, when it came to to Facebook and trying to outnumber us and basically bully us out of what it is that we're saying regarding our history here in America, regarding our families. They have all of those uh, parroted narratives and stuff like that, that they was comfortable. But if 10 people said it against one little Indian, it might appear that these motherfuckers actually have some validity to what it is that they're fucking saying, even though we know that that's absolutely couldn't be farther from the truth. We've, we've expressed it. We beat them down just with facts, not even getting serious. And you know, I ain't even gonna lie. A couple of times I gave up my address. I invited these motherfuckers to the dance floor that they act like they wanted. I tried to keep it with scholarship and, and historical points. And I give the first hand information. I give a primary source. I don't just sit there and talk shit off of my opinion. I'm gonna give you the, you know, the spicy meatball. I show you where I got it from primary sources. No way around that shit. They can make up all these fancy narratives and stuff, whatever it is that they feel is necessary in order to, you know, that, that famous Houdini shit, that escapism that they like to do, because that's what it is. When you completely try to, um, you know, uh, you rely on your cognitive dissonance to either buy you some sort of empathy or sympathy, that's a crazy crazy situation to put yourself in, uh, to even use your ignorance to feel like that's some reason why someone's supposed to fucking embrace you or take it easy on you when these motherfuckers wage the all-out war and assault on grandmas. They wage the all-out war on our grandmothers. And now here it is, the ancestors is just sprinkling their little magic dust on these motherfuckers. And look at everything. Look at everybody falling off the whip. So as far as thinking that we, we're going to have to take certain approaches that we're more familiar with and you know we know some approaches that make a motherfucker stay in there some creative shit we was gifted with right um however all we got to do is sit back i don't want to say sit back and don't do nothing but as far as these people that are little nuisances in the way the ancestors is blowing them motherfuckers off blowing them out the way they they hurting themselves they shooting themselves in the foot there's really nothing much that we need to do because they're doing it for themselves. The greaseball behavior, um, the company that they're keeping, just, you know, it's really simple. You don't have to do anything. You can kind of just stay in your perspective lane and watch all these other motherfuckers swerve off the road. They speeding. They, they ignoring all the signs. They ignoring all the detours. These motherfuckers don't want to hit the brakes at the stop sign and come to a full st stop before they look both ways. They just all over the road, all over the road. And they're going to get stuck in traffic right before the, the road turns into the ocean and they're going to have to take a whole nother route somewhere, right? They're going to have to take the route from whence they think they came. That Ain't that some funny shit? Of course, the goddamn Atlantic. But now, so again, I don't know if he deleted me or what, but I just find this shit really hilarious. And they think the Pan-Africans really think that this shit's just going to disappear and just sweep under the rug. They've been digging, trolling into our accounts. These motherfuckers done found pictures of my grandmother that I don't even have. I still ain't figured out which cousin page they stole it from. But that means that you were strategically watching me, watching my every move. You're going through the 4,000 plus or however many thousands of friends that I have that I've had since 2007. You going through a whole lot to find a little chink in my armor. And here it is. We don't pay y'all niggas no mind. We not on y'all set. We don't care about nothing y'all got going on. But y'all still mentioning our names every other day, every other week. You know, uh, I'm hearing they still talking about the twins and shit like that. The twins don't give a goddamn what y'all motherfuckers is doing. We could care less. But when you put yourselves in these positions, you know you got to get clowned. It's only fair. Um, so, yeah, I'm suggesting that the Pan Fire community, y'all get ready to brace yourself. It's going to be a bumpy ride. It's going to get really wavy up in this motherfucker. So, you know, from here on out, 
Y'all stay in y'all lane. I'm pretty sure that after this right here, uh, and then of course there's that that sad incident with uh uh the brother Sonetta just you know sitting in New York City in the car somewhere parked with the hammer talking about you know this what y'all gonna get you know what I'm saying <laughs> this what y'all gonna get if your YouTube niggas run up on me you know I'm mad because um. You know, Hassan Campbell and them was uh, taking shots at his mother and his family and stuff like that, which they did to me. They did that to me and plenty of other Indians. You did it to Quincy Hot. You did it to me. Um, you did it to several others. You know, they, they thought that shit was cool. So now all of that shit is happening to who? It's happening to them. They were completely acceptable, uh, to completely accepting of the Native Americans uh, and the other continental Africans completely disrespecting us. They were totally okay with it, even when it came down to uh, the so-called uh, white people coming into place, being disrespectful and racist and taking their stands, uh, siding with the, the Native Americans that were prejudiced, okay? Um, so, and, and then you had the skin folk that was total in total agreeance with them just because they were such haters, such deniers of truth that they were willing to sit through and laugh at monkey jokes, nappy head jokes, black grandma jokes. They laughed at all of that shit just to, you know, uh, 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 what they may have thought was to strengthen their stance at telling us who we're not when they themselves all this time still can't tell us who the fuck they are. They always spent a lot of time trying to tell us who we're not, but they still have yet to tell us who they are. Henceforth, could stick that person to a live a couple of times, arguing with her and put the pictures up of my grandmother and all of that. Um, you know, uh, try to play my son with, with his felony conviction and all of that other shit. And this bitch done lied. She said she got seven children, which she got four. Uh, she said her husband died in a goddamn, I don't, I think she said two lies. If I'm not mistaken, she told me a motorcycle accident at all. Or maybe it was he got murdered or something. I don't know. But I know we was taking shots at each other. And, you know, I clap back and I'm kind of funny when I do. And I was making my little clap back and I was like, oh, I see she had uh the word the name twan across her neck so i was like oh boy you looking for twan twan ain't coming home playing games you know i was being petty betty and shit like that but i'm entitled to do that you throw pictures of my grandmother i could talk about your children ain't nobody exempt if you could talk about motherfuckers grandmothers and parents and and and, and children and shit you don't, don't think your shit gonna be exempt you gotta be kidding me and all the while i would say after eight hours of clowning, I'm fucking retired. So however much time I spend doing anything, whether it's basket weaving, fucking ice skating or roller skating or on Facebook all day, I can fucking do that because I don't got no clock to push, right? And I damn sure ain't got no little babies that's relying on me to be eating food and you know tying their shoe and shit like that, right? So then my time is a little different. But them bitches would talk about their children but be on Facebook for 14 hours at a time. Y'all remember? A year ago, the year before last, when I said to Revy, if you got two small children under 10 years old and I can show you a feed that we've been going back and forth arguing over who African and who's American Indian for 14 hours, bitch, in my mind, there's two babies knocking at your door telling you they hungry and you shouting out at the door, get the fuck away from the door, I'll be right there. That's the type of shit that I pictured y'all doing. Come to find out, not too far from the goddamn truth. This is exactly what these babies was experiencing in y'all pan-African households while you busy killing grandmas, baby on the other side door, hungry, lunch, breakfast time, you was on there talking shit, lunch time, your ass was on there talking shit, dinner time, bedtime, bitch ain't tucked them babies in or nothing, you just busy, so busy trying to kill grandma, tell me that I'm not an Indian. They spent a lot of time doing that. I spent a lot of time doing that. A lot of time, just, you know, creating these situations where, you know, you just shouted out a bunch of torts and, you know, angry, uh, 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 sentiments and shit like that, you know, uh, and then, and now look at this situation, look at where they at with this shit right now, y'all just think this shit is hilarious, we don't even have to do nothing, we ain't have to bust nobody ass, even though some of them need a day ass whip, they play a lot of games, you post some pictures of people, dead grandmothers and sisters and dead parents and stuff like that, and calling them African when they telling you who the fuck they are, they played a lot of games, I'm talking hands and feet games, these are the games you don't play in the inner city. You don't play with urban Indians in these type of situations. And they have crossed those lines. And they've certainly, you know, played those games. They've played those games. And now, like I said, we ain't even have to lay a finger on them and look at what the ancestors is doing.
Look at how the ancestors is just flinging these motherfuckers like paper out the way. Don't even take no challenge. Sit them down. Now, this little incident got Garfield parking his motherfucking Facebook account. He done parked this shit. He done hit the car, put the tarp over it and shit. He don't want nobody recognizing. He he been riding around with no registration. The nigga ain't got no plates on the car. And he's still trying to do 75 and a 60. This shit hilarious. I think it's hilarious. I think it's absolutely hilarious. So all of this blackity black black shit ain't none of these motherfuckers came up with a resolution. They've only come up with problems. Meanwhile, here it is back at the ranch that nobody wants to listen to us. Have you noticed that they keep doing what? Coming to the Indian with their problems. Hold up. You done said your grandma was something else. Indians don't got problems. The Indians got solutions. Y'all niggas over there. Them niggas over there. They're the ones with the problems. Now, they out there on that deep, out there in that deep water. They out there in the Atlantic, out there on the ocean, out there on the ocean, out there in the deep water. And ain't no coming back. These niggas finna to slide down a razor blade mountain and land in the alcohol river. Remember that shit from Juice? <laughs> Sam Jackson said, I heard you done uh, slid down a razor blade mountain and landed in the alcohol river. That's what these pan are doing right now. That's what they're doing. That's what they're dealing with. This shit is comical. I'm telling y'all, you need this common belief because outside of that, do you see how 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 the stress can increase? We have been been uh, encroached, uh, encumbered, and encountered by just the little pawns on the chessboard. We ain't even get to the rook, to the knight, to the bishop, to the queen, to the king. We ain't even get to their side of the board yet. But it's about to be checkmate. Do you understand what I'm telling y'all? Look at how this shit is playing out. They're going to send, they're going to send people to come and act like they see the light now. Now you're going to have, you got your Juanita Bynum. I don't know if y'all saw that video. Uh, very beloved sister in the Christian community. Okay, she done been through some things. There is some things as a woman I have related to her too, but you know, I don't deal with the, you know, the whole sky daddy and all that other stuff, right? We don't, I don't deal with that. So now here it is. If you see the video, the first uh, 13 minutes, I couldn't get past it. I, you know, the, the song was lovely, but the shit played for like nine minutes. Uh, and after like 12 minutes, she made her grand interest or whatever. You know, her green screen was set up all nice and pretty, a cute little girly room and all this dainty, fancy shit. It was really cute. Uh, and then she comes and makes her spiel. And from 13 minutes and 30 seconds, she talks about, she remembers her childhood. She knows that she's chopped on creep. By 14 minutes, she done went to two other fucking continents, right? She done went from being chopped on creep to East India, Barat, Hindustan. She done went over there, got back to America, and then said, but everybody's from Africa still. So by 15 minutes, I wanted to throw the whole fucking video away. So I can't be, um, you know, for people that's just coming into the truth, that may be fine. It'll take her two, three years to catch up with that spell casting Jesus, the blood of Jesus mentality. That shit brainwashes people. And I don't care if you don't like it. It posts that things are going to be okay. Meanwhile, the fucking walls are closing in on you and you're not going to do anything about it because you're codependent on the idea that something supernatural is going to happen and come whisk away all your pain and whisk away all your problems. Meanwhile, your bones still hurt. Your bills still ain't paid. You ain't never seen Jesus in the supermarket doing no shopping for no goddamn Thanksgiving. Who paid that bill? But a motherfucker spend 45 minutes praying to somebody that the same motherfuckers that took their identity away gave them. Don't call me biased. Can't tell me shit. King James was my 16th great-grandfather, and the joke's not on me. Sorry if you don't like it. If you don't know how to use that to make sure that you can get out of parking tickets, uh, the IRS bills. If you can't use that against your enemies because those false instruments are your fucking enemies, whether you know it or not, those false instruments are your enemies. Those debt notes are your enemies. And you end up paying for it. You lose sleep over it. Motherfuckers get constipated and bind up behind it so the shit causes bowel obstruction, all types of shit, heart problems, all types of failures in all your organs and systems. Your health is all off because of the stress. But then you think that there's somebody out the sky that's going to come and fix all of this shit. 
You think that's going to happen? That don't make no goddamn sense. It hasn't happened yet. You can pray over somebody. You can lay hands on somebody. God ain't taking nobody motherfucking cancer away. It's the will of your own mind that is going to decrease or increase whatever is good or bad inside of you. You can slow down the process. You can avoid the process if you take some steps in the eating and staying away from certain things that are known to be fucking harmful, that are known to be harmful. It's different. But you see all of these people telling you about these ingredients and shit like that. You see it in paint thinner. You see it in all these other shit. But you'll go out and buy your babies a box of Fruit Loops with the same goddamn turpentine and whatever it is that's in that motherfucker. But I love my kids. You buying them snacks with red five. You already gave them these new uh, autism injections because that's really what it is, these immunizations. How many motherfuckers you know that was running around with measles at any point in time? This ain't the 1700s before they started salting and curing and smoking the meats and refrigerating shit. Universal precautions for any disease initially is hand washing. Niggas got hot water now. We got soap and water now. We know you spend 20 minutes, right? You spend 20 minutes, 20 seconds, hard seconds, rubbing in between your fingers to get the germs and shit off or whatever. So what motherfuckers running around here with measles? I got a problem. And now you got people that's so used to the system that want to tell other motherfuckers how to raise their kids. So me, I have children that are in their 20s, right? late 20s, okay? Uh, and then I have one that's not even 20 yet. So the difference in my parenting style, so the same shit that I did with my two children that I had before I was 20, by the time I was 20 years old, it's not the same shit that I'm doing with my child that I had in my 30s. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there's a difference in mothering skills, definitely a lot more mature, a lot more structured. And uh, at this point, I, I completely, you know, had the best hold on it that I was able to provide for mine. Okay, which they happen to be satisfied with. But I have a problem with people trying to tell motherfuckers how to do their kids. Don't it's not your business on whether or not somebody homeschools their children or don't put participate in this type of establishment. It's not your business on whether or not people want to immunize their children or not and give them something that's harmful. It's not the same shit that we had in the 70s. It's not the same. We didn't have autism. You didn't have all of these problems. Now these motherfuckers getting these shots. They're getting all these injections and shit like that. And then you have these babies whose eyes is wide away from their nose like a fucking fish. But you're doing the right thing. According to who? According to who? Sometimes nobody wants to think that some of these vaccines is a form of child abuse. And it's also a form of being controlled. You're being controlled. Some people like being controlled. That's fine, but don't force that shit on everybody. So for anybody that's homeschooling their children, I commend you. At this point, you don't want to keep them there where they keep getting fed lies and, and untruths, right? You don't have that kind of time because mix that with those new vaccines, those new injections that they're giving them. Psychologically, these children are not going to be able to adapt. Can you imagine the damage and devastation of them growing up? This new batch of kids with all this energy and all this fire and all this built up, picked up aggression and shit like that. You didn't attribute that to these fucking vaccines or anything like that. Mixed in with the fruit snacks and the consumerism things that they showed at all these kids. Mommy, I want that. I want that. Oh, I want these hot Cheetos and all this other crazy shit that I know damn well. My grandmother, my mama would have never bought us no goddamn hot Cheetos. She would have never did it. I don't care if we had our own money in our pocket and we went to the store. She said, go get what you want. I want these hot Cheetos. Oh, no, you don't. You don't want that. Put that shit back. And I'm looking at her like, oh, I want this. You said, get what I want. You ain't getting them hot Cheetos. And I would have accepted that as an answer. And I would have thanked her for it like now. Thanks, mom, for not letting me have those hot Cheetos. We got uh, Becky over here been eating hot Cheetos since we was five. And now the bitch is licking windows and shit like that. Right? We don't attribute none of that shit. I'm sorry, you got to be thankful for the correction or for the no's that I've heard. I'm thankful for a lot of times I heard no. Hell no. Spend the night where? Hell no. So thankful. I'm so thankful for those days where I was like, oh, I can't wait to be grown. I'm getting out this house. To hear no was very helpful to my life. Being told hell no 
was very helpful to my life. Oh, no, you won't be going over there. Oh, gosh, I can't stand them. They don't never want to let me do nothing. Oh, I was so, I'm so glad now that there's a lot of houses that I couldn't spend a night. There's a lot of things that didn't happen to me as a result of my family saying no to me. I respect it. I appreciate it. Can I go to that party over there? Hell no, you can't go to that party. Damn, I was, mama mean. She don't want me to do nothing. She ain't want me shot. Mama didn't want me getting raped. Mommy didn't want me getting touched by nobody's uncle spending the night at nobody's house. She may not have said those those things out her mouth but as a parent as a mother now i know why they said no thank you thank you for saying no thank you for letting me know that there was limitations and boundaries and a certain way that i was supposed to take care of myself as a result of me thinking i'm young and and know it all and shit like that i appreciate those fucking no's i appreciate them Thank them for it all the fucking time. And every time I tried to go against it, my mother told me don't go to this party. I went to Brooklyn and snuck off and went to the party anyway, came home with two motherfucking raccoon eyes, right? Looking like Tommy Hearns when he fought uh, Michael, uh, 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 what's his name, Martin, when he fought Tommy Hearns. I don't want to fight no more, Gina. Eyes big as shit. My eyes were so big, I could see it out the corner of my motherfucking eye. I could see my eyes on my nose. That's how big and puffy my <laughs> My shits was. Got jumped out in Brooklyn, popping shit, trying to be cute. Had to get all the way to Queens. That shit was like warriors. Remember how they was all the way out their territory? Where we was at, we was surrounded by the same people that was trying to fuck us up and finish us over there in their area, in their neck of the woods. That's their territory, their reservation, right, out there in Brooklyn. We had to walk all the way to West Bubblefuck just to get to the fucking train to get back to Queens. And then we had to take the A train. So after we got uh, accosted and jumped in bed style, we still had to deal with Decepticons and all the other shit that could have happened on the way back to Queens. Just trying to get to our side of town, the Broadway Junction, to where we can catch, you know, a train to get closer to the home, the J or the Z or whatever. Crazy. Crazy. But the Panthers is not getting away with this shit. We're not going to let that shit go down. This shit is hilarious. This shit is funny. And it's also a learning experience. This is a learning experience. Did you not hear the girl say that she was accosted by email to perform, participate in a social experiment? A, a social experiment on who? The Pan-Africans? Because that shit didn't work on the American Indians. We fought them people tooth and nail. Fought them tooth and nail. We came, we conquered, we kicked their fucking ass, and now we ain't even in those goddamn groups no more. I know the fuck I ain't. I got tired of watching them pathetic motherfuckers sit there and sing them sad ass songs and talk that dumb shit. When I don't got the same problems, they I don't got those problems. That's their shit. Sorry that they have them, but they got a remedy and a cure too. And if that's you know, they gotta they gotta make sure that they um they get to it. They get to it. Got to get to it. They got to get into it. And they're not doing that. They're not doing that. They're not doing that. People got to learn how to stay in their lane. If you think that everybody is just going to do with that, that fake ass American dream, everybody be good. Don't, don't do, don't do this. Don't do that. Go to college. You'll get a good job and all this other shit. Go to good co college. You motherfuckers ain't teaching them how to be bosses no more. How's our grandparents so wealthy and they had about third, fourth grade education? You think it was because they got a college education? That's not what's happened. And then you're telling this to children who have been failed growing up in the 80s and 90s and they got the degrees and now they're saddled with fucking loans and still can't get a goddamn job. Oh, you gotta be kidding me, man. You gotta be kidding me. It's kind of unfair that um, y'all think that just gonna work for all. You ain't talking that shit to Bill Gates. That motherfucker didn't even graduate high school. He didn't even graduate high school. Stop thinking that those institutions which lie to you, oppress you, and make you robots to oppress your own fucking skin folk. You have a contribution when you're taking these fucking jobs. You're not creating a, si a situation that's going to be beneficial to your people. And then when you motherfuckers get all the money, you want to still control how people do shit. A motherfucker tell you they need something. You tell them, oh, if you need anything, just call me. Then when they fucking call you, 
But then when they call you, you sit putting stipulations on shit. You want to tell them how they're going to live and how they're going to fucking do things and all this other shit. And then they can feel like they ain't got nobody, right? Niggas, forgive the hell out of these white people, these oppressors, all of the people that do them wrong uh, on a government scale or all of that. You forgiving, you're compassionate, you're understanding, you're all of these other things. But when it comes to your own people, you can't respect their wishes. You can't respect what it is that they're trying to do different. Whether they fail or not, it's not your choice to tell people how to deal with this especially if they trying to do something different. Meanwhile, you got these motherfuckers over here getting accosted with so talking about do they want to participate in social experiments? So why is it that the Pan-Africans can have all this influence to get these people to make, get us, get our people to make it look attractive to go someplace ain't nobody wanted to be for the last 400 motherfucking years? But we can't take what it is that we know, the background that we know, the background that we have, the beef that we have with the school, the education, New York State education system, for me in particular, uh, New York City Board of Education in particular. We can't take those beefs and make sure that that shit doesn't happen to our children. My junior high school teacher, that bitch terrorized me. She terrorized me. And you want to know what? All these fucking adults told me, go to school and be good. Because I was always smart. But that bitch would pull me to the side. She wouldn't even let me go to graduation. From junior high school, I couldn't walk the stage. My grades was too high. I cut school every chance that I got. Because that lady would talk this shit to me. And tell me I wasn't going to be shit. Because I always had a question. I had questions about the shit that they was teaching me. That bitch was 75 years old and I got to see that woman go to prison. Her, her sister, and her husband was robbing the school district. I left that school district in 1988. Here it is, 2002, and that bitch still had computers in that school from the 90s. Taking all that money and buying brownstones in Brooklyn and Manhattan. Manhattan and all this other stuff. So now for the people that told me, go to school, be good, listen to your teacher, all those bullshit ass instructions, you got this corrupt bitch telling me I ain't going to be shit on the low. You wouldn't even believe me. Those are the situations that some of these adults have created to where the kids become forthcoming and tell you what type of terrorist situations that they're being in. And you just think that they misbehaving in school. You don't know what these teachers be doing, what they be saying to your children. You want to get mad because you're getting a phone call. Hey, Billy's not acting right and he's being disruptive. And you get up there, you want to threaten your kid. Oh, you embarrassing me. Oh, you got these teachers calling me. I got to leave work and this and this and that. You don't know what that teacher was saying to your child to make your child trigger. You ain't getting to the bottom of it because in your mind, go to school, be good, listen to your teachers. My teacher telling me that I came here 16, 19, swinging from a goddamn vine. Calling us porch monkeys and shit. Listen to my teacher. That's how y'all feel, because y'all biased. Y'all got this picture of the way the Europeans presented it, and you think that that's the right way to go. You ain't taking the message from the European to be self-governing and take your land. You let them have it, but you telling us to listen to our teachers, go to school, and be good. For real? How Mr. Davis go? For real, cuz? For real, cuz? type of shit. It's the type of shit people be dealing with. The type of shit people be dealing with. It's really sick. It's really sick how y'all so comfortable with the way these things are going, right? Y'all so comfortable because some of y'all actually feel like y'all made it. Y'all feel like y'all better than people anyway. You feel like you above somebody because you had a, a A1 pay grade or, you know, you got 20,000 degrees and, and, and this and that and all these various different topics and areas, all of which end up harming your people, the same people you pray to that same God, and you ask them to take away the blues, take away the pain, but you're participating actively, whether you know it or not. Whether you know it or not. How you gonna blame the white man? That motherfucker ain't forced you to participate in none of his industries that ended up being harmful to your people.
You chose that thinking you was going to be better than the people you wanted to leave behind. Yeah, I know some people don't like me saying shit like that, but I'm going to get to the, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. There was a time where I thought I was hot shit too. Went from an hourly person to a salaried uh, individual with a corner office for a company with a half a billion dollars. They took what I implemented from both systems, two different softwares. They took all my time, all my energy away from my babies. They still underpaid me, right? They would pay some fresh white kid out of high school who may be the nephew or, or the cousin or, or the boyfriend of one of the daughters or one of the owners. They're going to pay that motherfucker fresh out of high school. $20,000 more than me, and he going to end up being my boss. With me, I had to bust my ass all the way to the top to get to where I was, only for them to try and humble me, right? This was their fucking mistake. They tried to humble me to the point where friends turned on me at this motherfucking job. Them niggas tried to feed me maggots. Tried to feed me my favorite pizza with maggots. This shit ain't no game. Oh, I got a million and one stories of how, you know, I overcame abuse. I overcame abusive situations. Niggas think that Ike Turner's is just inside the house. No, them, them men at the job was bullies too. Every time they thought they could call me after hours and don't fucking pay me. That was bullies. That was being, I was being bullied by a job. But when you've been trained to go to school, get a good job, be on time and do all these performances. They never gave me no sense of pride about owning my own shit. So now here it is, all these years later, we're having such a hard time working together because we've only been taught, encouraged, and forced to create, to, to make sure we maintain their industries, not our own. They got us to laugh at our own shit. Everybody was coming over here getting high off for something because we always had the party favors always had the good herbs the good motherfucking minerals we always had everything they criminalized it and they locked our people up for our our roots our herbs our minerals and spices and all this other shit and then they sell it back to you and when they sell it on back to you then it's all good oh just go get you some tylenol too much tylenol fuck your liver up but I can smoke three joints and never have a problem and all the pain go away. Why are you judging me and my weed? See how whack these people are? Hypocritical motherfuckers. And the church has assisted. So when it comes down to these motherfucking lawsuits, you best believe there's going to be some churches involved. There's going to be some reverends and, pe and pastors and preachers that's going to get put on notice. The Nation of Islam, uh, 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 the Morris Science Temple, uh, the, the, the fucking Church of Latter-day Saints, the Seven-Day Adventists, the fucking Methodist, African Methodist, Episcopal, all these motherfuckers play an integral part and in why I, so many of our people can't get it together. Now, let's argue. Let's argue. Because there's still a motherfucker that's sitting there watching this video like, I don't know why she going in on the Lord, but I hope she don't go to hell. I'm going to pray for her with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Put the blood of Jesus on her. She going to be all right. God, motherfuckers, we launched this A4 shit, or A4 Pure. Ain't no other platform out there like that. You don't got to hit my inbox or say, oh, you never got back to me. I called you and you never got back to me. Like, I don't got no motherfucking life. Now you got somewhere you spend $1. You got the genealogy guide. You can spend time with it. Everything is there. It's been laid out for you it's, it's it, it took a long time to create this shit but this is something that's so fucking honest like you got motherfuckers on my youtube what's the commercial you got the hebrew israelites coming talking shit trying to drag me across the fucking atlantic into israel where them niggas ain't even welcome then you got some other shit talking about, oh, Phoenix, you joining other people. Oh, you're just like the rest of them. Just like the rest of them, bitch. What's wrong with spending four quarters for a self-guided genealogy? If I do your shit, it's going to cost you more. Now you got something you can do for yourself. You can reference it at your own time. Nobody will know how fast or slow you're going. Help you get past your brick walls. And the way it's laid out, it's so easy. A caveman can do it. 
And you got these motherfuckers complaining. But meanwhile, they on these other apps from these other dirty ass feather niggas buying nationality packages, uh, uh, fake ass trust, all these promising you dumb ass niggas, all the water under every single bridge in America, all the water is yours now. And you believe that. And you spent $50, but a motherfucker going to get on my shit talking about spending 10 dimes for a genealogy guy. You got to be kidding me. This how y'all want to do business? This how y'all want to do business, right? Oh, you got to be patient with people. Oh, Phoenix, you know, be patient. Some people are just now waking up. Well, they need to stay over there with the just now waking up people. Because I'm over here with the consistent message. I'm not changing. I'm not going backwards. I'm not turning back. 12 o'clock. Straight up and down. Like 6 o'clock. You understand? Like 6 o'clock. This is the way the Aborigine going. This is where the American Indian is headed into this next level. This next level. I wish I had a screenshot of what my sister Lana said. Lana, that shit was so on point. You made a post about masculinity the other day when niggas kept talking about masculine energy, masculine energy, and all this other shit. I can't remember it, but I'm telling you, I thought about that shit all day. I thought about that post. I meant to go back and screenshot it because I wanted that to be my post. I wanted your post to be my post when you talked about them talking about us with the masculine energy and shit like that. Meanwhile, we get shit done. Ain't no nigga never been fucked up on my watch. Doesn't happen. Masculine energy or not, that nigga's safer with me than he'll ever be with his homeboys. Ever, ever, ever. And that's everybody all across the board. Not the streets, not the motherfucking police, not none of these oppressors. I put the fucking force field around my shit. Everybody good. Everybody good. Everybody good. So just so people know where I'm at, you know it's Phoenix Moon, but I think I'm going to put five killer at the end of that shit. So y'all know this bitch ain't playing. Fully loaded, ready to go. Fully loaded. I think I'm going to put five killer. Those is my ancestors, the five killers. Out of Tennessee. Now it just makes so much sense to me, right? It makes so much sense to embrace this shit. Makes so much sense to embrace it. So let me tell y'all, outside of that, I done found some other interesting things. Now, I'm going to have to get knee deep into these Hebrews. I'm going to have to get deep because they trolling now. Everybody, they grasping. They, they taking, they like running out of oxygen or some shit like that that so you got all these different fashions and they're gonna keep coming they're gonna come strong but they're gonna come with stuff too that final battle shit everybody that made it out that final battle shit with some fucking dignity and shit about them you've already been prepared for anything that happens with these pan fries or anybody else you don't need any more training you don't need any more training and battle debating we nailed that shit. We won. They can't never come back from it. They can't never fuck with us. We still ain't even drop all the content, but there's no way that they can tell us who we're not right now. No way. So now we got to get to the next level. It's not even about worried about them no more. Now you got to figure out how you're going to defeat the other motherfucking, you know, the big, the other boss at the end of the video game. We ain't even get to the top floor yet. And when we get to the top floor, you know what they're going to be trying to do. Send us back downstairs. Well, uh, you, this isn't the place where you go. They're going to try and say, go that way. You know what I'm saying? Send us in mad different directions as if the truth that we know that we came into understanding don't apply to us. No. No, 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 no. How the Native Americans try to convince us that the whites of Indians don't apply to us. I'm tired of arguing with you dumb motherfuckers, you uneducated, smart, educated, dumb motherfuckers, unlearned niggas that tell me that a Native American is not a corporate construct that came after the 1970s, after the Civil Rights Act. The Civil Rights Act with Rosa Parks, uh, uh, the damn Abernathy, what's his name, Mr. Abernathy, that bullheaded bitch, John Lewis, yup, he's a bitch, I don't take, I don't got no qualms about calling none of them motherfuckers that. That bitch, John Lewis, 
You got your Maxine Waters and all these other motherfuckers. All of them know that shit say whites are Indians. It don't say, don't say nothing about black people. Don't say Afro-American. It don't say African-American. It says whites are Indians. You can go in any restaurant and get a meal. You can go in any bathroom and use it. You can sleep in any hotel. You can rent any apartment and can't be discriminated. You fucking tell me. When the Native Americans had to leave a reservation and couldn't get a hotel room at the best inn. Tell me when. It never happened. This is why we get so angry and so passionate about how we got to keep driving this goddamn truth because motherfuckers keep trying to beat us with bullshit when we telling you exactly what it is. You shit in the floor, the cognitive dissonance pull kicks in, and then they still want to act all aloof and shit. And then a week after that, they get all that information, all that feedback, and then sit there and want to post videos about some so-called white person beating up on so-called black, some so-called little black girl and shit like that. That shit don't do nothing but make you angry. All right, nigga, if you was there, yeah, you'll probably pop off, but what you gonna do to make sure that shit don't happen to your daughter? You gonna leave her paperwork saying black, African-American? That's what y'all gonna do. That's what a lot of motherfuckers is doing. You letting these people tell you, you need, a, you need a tribal ID card in order to qualify. You ain't challenging nothing. Not a parking ticket, not a letter that they sent home, a referral telling you your child is bad. You just accepting it. Sign it, just sign it, Billy. Stop talking back to the teacher and this and this and this and that. No, number one, state that your child might be right. And this bitch is trying to play them and get them some psychological babble that they not jocking. You don't respect their individuality. You don't even trust that a thinking person, allegedly such as yourself, might have created a child that's able to think on their own as well. So now we want to change them, change them from thinking on their own to go back to being robotic. To go back and being robotic. Who's the killer here? Stop blaming the white people. I get oppressed by niggas that look like me every day. And not one white person walking down those street, hey, nigger, I ain't in them situations. But they will try and stop me from buying a house in a neighborhood that my peoples lived in for 120 fucking years. They'll try and do that. They'll try and give my shit to a fucking foreigner, though. They will do that. Oh, oh, Trump is letting all of, oh, he's taking babies away from their mothers. You stupid motherfuckers, they was taking your, your babies away from your grandmothers too. You won't even worry about your own. You still worried about everybody else. Meanwhile, after you finish helping the foreigners come help themselves to your shit, you still standing there empty handed with a, 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 a fucking empty belly and shit like that. You ain't got none of this shit you just advocated for the foreigner to get. Meanwhile, you in exile in your own land and you're still okay with it because the sky daddy's going to come and he's going to fix this shit. He going to come and fix it. Maybe he came and left. Maybe he came and said, oh, these niggas is crazy. I'm out of here. I ain't coming back. Never fucking doing on y'all. No shit like that happened, right? Because I wouldn't listen. That shit said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's. But you motherfuckers sit here crying because you a letter. Oh, these student loans. Oh, these student loans. He told you, give it back to Caesar. So you don't believe your God. You don't believe Phoenix. You don't believe none of the Indians. You don't believe grandma. But you believe the same motherfuckers that's going to give your cornbread away or take yours from you. Or give you some, um, then they might be the nice, it might be the good oppressor, and they might give you a little bit of GMO corn so you can make some GMO cornbread. And your dumb ass will be happy with that GMO shit. Yes, sir, boss. They done so nice, and Mr. Being Good to me, he done gave us this corn. <sighs> Fuck out of here, y'all. It's shit ridiculous. You can act like I'm lying. They can not like what I say and keep trying to curb me uh, and try and make me sound like Donna Reed and very, you know, um, proper and, and, you know, have makeup on all the time and not wear my hair bonnet and worry about my tooth that I almost died in a car accident, but I'm still alive and I can still bite into a motherfucking apple and rip a goddamn steak apart with this crooked motherfucking tooth. This shit built character. I almost died in a goddamn car. I had trauma to this shit twice. 
I fell through a goddamn bathroom stall head first, about to hit the fucking commode. This ain't no different than a motherfucking scar. It's no different than the scars that you don't see from this fucking place being corrupted and overrun with foreigners to where I couldn't catch fucking breaking my own shit. Those scars are way deeper. Those scars are harder to look at than my motherfucking crooked tooth you niggas think you gonna keep talking about. My shits was always fucking straight. I don't gotta impress no motherfucking body. My heart pure, challenge that. Let's argue on that. Let's argue on that. I mean, well, I can't make everybody dreams come true, but goddamn, if I don't put myself out there trying and don't feel no way about it, because it's the right thing to do. Dollar your dignity, and some of you motherfuckers want dollars, but my dignity means everything to me. I didn't take no rap video, no no rap money. I ain't fuck with them rappers. I wasn't taking their drugs. I wasn't giving up no cookies. I could not be butt-ass naked on MTV and have to explain some shit to my daughter, telling her don't shake her ass. Meanwhile, she see old throwback MTV and see me with Joe Cleasy making it fucking clap and all this other shit, right? Embarrass my fucking mother, right? Or make them compromise what they say is success because I got a rap deal. But meanwhile, I'm showing my motherfucking coochie lips all over MTV and BET, right? Dollar on my dignity. I choose dignity every motherfucking time. You see how that pan fire bitch talk about they came in her email asking her if she wanted to participate in a social experiment? Do you think that they would try that same shit with Phoenix Moon? You think they try that with me? Hey, uh, we noticed that you are popular in this community. Would you like to to be a, a, a part of this social experiment? Against who? On who? They don't ask you to do social experiments on white people. They don't ask you to do social experiments on the foreigners that come over here and take your cornbread. How hard was it to turn that down? And then whatever they compensated her with, this bitch says she got seven kids, the troll. Says she got seven kids, but she was sending other people, children, boxes of clothes and shit. How you got seven kids? Your husband died. You a young mother under 30 with seven babies. And when somebody else across the water get in the fire or whatever happens, they tell you a sob story. And this bitch is uh, pan fried or set to the rescue. ISIS to the motherfucking rescue, sending these niggas sneakers and all types of stuff like that the ridicule the persecution african so-called black community ain't got nothing nothing on the millions and billions of dollars that their bosses put spend to keep us distracted to keep us dizzy, right? Because the truth is there. When it all boils down to it, can't nobody say, well, why they ain't never told us? First of all, why would somebody who wants your shit put you on? Why would somebody who's trying to overpower you, overthrow you, put you on? I'm asking these PhD motherfuckers that keep insisting that people get PhDs so we can be this and we can be that and we can be all these great things because you got them PhDs and guess what? There's still a little motherfucking Baltimore getting his head cracked right now by some overzealous foreigner with a goddamn badge. I got pictures of NYPD officers now. They have a Muslim patrol community. And they got squad cars. And they got the NYPD blues on with their turbans on. Why I don't see no Indians with no feathers? They can wear their kima and their turban to protect and serve the community. But you want to look at me funny when I got my war paint on? Niggas joining up with the motherfuckers that rob us and take that, think I'm going to take that as an act of war? That's an act of war. We discussing on how to beat the big boss, and you side up with my enemy, nigga. You 
that's a way you waging war against me as far as I'm concerned. Ain't no Sade on the battlefield. Punch fucking put a commercial up today. You got this Hebrew Israelite nigga telling me he want all the smoke. What's well, where the fire at, baby? Where the fire at, nigga? You gonna have to show me how you inhale and exhale. You want the smoke? You don't want this smoke. Everybody act like they got something going on until it's time to be. They don't want these Indian problems, though. They all they want all this culture, everything out of us, everything industries, our swag, how we dress, how we create new things, how we say fly shit out our mouth, how we got the job talk, how we can play the dozens, we nice with the rapping, we got the, the songwriting for that ass, the voices, the melodies, the music for your soul. We got everything to make everybody feel good, but don't nobody wanna make you feel good in your own house. I got a hard time with that. I'm having a hard time with that. When you go visit these other countries, you going over there on your best behavior. You not infringing or encroaching on none of those people's rights. Why the fuck do they get to come here and they're not subject to the same stop and search that I was sus I subject to? Skin color look just like mine. They not over here beating up no damn Ethiopians. They may look like us, but they not us. They know they not us. You don't think we stick out like a sore thumb already to the whole world? So now we taking that stick out and we got our feathers up and shit. Now everybody want to talk shit. When we ain't had nothing to do and we was all standing in solidarity with all this black this, black that. We want this. We want justice. We want peace. We want this. Now the Indians saying some other shit. Yo, man, everybody get the fuck from around. This our shit. We finna clean up. And now motherfuckers is mad. We was waiting on these other motherfuckers to do it for the last couple hundred years. Now we talking about doing it for ourselves. And you got interference from these same motherfuckers that look like us. Same motherfuckers that look like us. I'm not going to go soft. I'm not going to go soft. This shit ain't going to wear off. This ain't no phase I'm going through. This is me from here on out. So well, I'm 44 now. Uh, if, if I live to be 125, guess what I'm going to still be talking about? Grandma. Still. In the back of my mind, I'm always going to remember my children and what I leave behind. And ain't nothing wrong with a good name. And a legacy of truth. They'll never be able to, nobody told us. Nobody told me. They'll never be able to say it. Now that's for the shit that they love to hear and for the shit that they tired of hearing. But I'll tell it to them until I ain't got no more breath. Because that's my job. To do for the people I love. Grandma always said, wash behind your ears. I was so sick of hearing that, but you want to know what? When I was 35 and I was working at a job, I sat behind somebody who grandmother, mother, never told them to wash behind their ears. And this nigga had like potatoes growing out his shit. Nobody told him. Nigga got spuds growing out his ears all from behind and all of that, all in the back and the crease right there and all of that. Nobody told them. So me, I got sick of hearing it all the time. And then there's the motherfucker that nobody never told them. They got the excuse. They got the excuse. We don't. You could talk shit. We used to laugh at how our country, Bama ass cousins, used to be, respond and how they talk and all this other shit, not realizing the motherfuckers is closer to our ancient ways than us city fired folks. We all scared of fucking bugs. Can't look at this. Oh, we you scared to get our hands dirty and shit like that? Meanwhile, we lived in the goddamn dirt with our hands in the earth, producing all the crops that kept the whole goddamn world alive. Now they're going to make you ashamed of being a sharecropper? Are you really ashamed of being a sharecropper? You got niggas talking about they need to stop those. Dumb motherfucker, you ain't even got the picture of what happened with slavery nowhere. 
Because I guarantee you start looking on your folks out of a thousand people, maybe three of them were slaves. Two of them motherfuckers got convicted of a felony. Whether they did it or not, they couldn't outsmart the system. They didn't know how to maintain their straw man. Don't think that this shit just happened in 1933 when they declared the Bankruptcy Act. That's a lie. The SESCAV account started in 1666. In the 1680s is the creation of white people in America. Everybody was on the same level. The African, the 20 odd Negroes, don't necessarily look like me. They could have been white looking people with green eyes. Don't they call what they call Italians? Guineas. Why did they call me as North Africa? Sick of these niggas trying to drag motherfucker off the planet, all these educated folks, and they don't even know what the etymology of Africa is. They ain't never took the time, but they tell you, you African, just stop self-hating. You're African, you're this, you're that. Don't even know the goddamn meaning of it. And when they say that, they never mention that it meant white people up until 1815. When did... uh? Uh, John Henry Clark tell you that African was used for white people up until 1815. What's that funny looking man with Noko Rashidi looking like Rafiki from The Lion King? What's that fucking bald headed fat chubby guy that was talking shit about the American Indians and shit like that? Same African scholars. These bitches ain't got one kinfolk, no family members over there to be like, yeah, this is my cousin. Tell him what happened. There ain't not one nigga over there that can tell you the story of the Great Day of Terror when they took grandma's uh, great, 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 great grandmother away. Not one nigga. Not one. They don't even talk about the, the Arab slave trade. You motherfuckers want to keep mixing this transatlantic slave trade and you keep forgetting that the Arabs took the 12, 15, 20 million them astronomical numbers from one side of the continent to the other. You forget that, y'all want to leave that out. And then you got these fucking disrespectful Native Americans over here on the West Coast that forget they ass ancestors came over here as Chinese slaves through the Pacific, over through Alcatraz, over through Angel Island. They don't tell you about the Manila Galleons which was the Spanish slave ships that housed all the Chinese, and then they transplant, planted them in South America, Central America. So when you look on the walls and you see that the Mayans and the Incas look like me, and now you look at the motherfucker movie Apocalypto, and they look like Chow Young Fat. They strategically placed these people from the trans-Pacific slave trade in Mexico, in South America, and all the Spanish-speaking countries. So this is where they have that look. And what do they do? They make the face of all the more European face. They're not showing the Afro, uh, the, 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 the people of Mexico that look like me. They're not going to show you the people in Nicaragua that look like me. They're not going to show you the people in Brazil that look like me. They're not going to show you the people from Canada that look like me. They're not even going to show you the niggas from England that look like me. Ain't no wiggle room. Ain't no wiggle room. I'm not letting the choke hold up. Now, hold up. Because now with all these foreigners that came over here, you think there was a German lady that got your grandmama Willie Mae Jenkins name? How does that work? How that work? Frida Schwarzenheimer, now her name all of a sudden is Willie Mae Jenkins. For real? And you okay with that? You believe that? And she had 300 acres right there where that old uh, Indian reservation that's now defunct used to be. It just happened to be right there. Now that same area where you finding all of these people. Then in your mind, these motherfuckers so dumb in their mind, they act like everybody was broke because they, I just posted that article of the lady Amanda Davis. She had four babies. She went to visit her mother. This is during live slavery, right? This is back in the day. She went to go visit her mother in Pennsylvania. When did they let slaves do that? She go to visit her mother in Pennsylvania. 
She gets to Kentucky on her way home. She stops in this, uh, it was the jailhouse, or they called it the alms house or something like that, uh, or jailhouse, but they would put you up. It's like a shelter for the night. It gets cold. She got her four babies with her, and then her papoose, right? And they're talking about her papoose, which is the baby, how the baby look dark, got curly hair, and don't look light black. Right? damn near white, like her other three children. So she found herself having to explain they didn't want to keep, let her maintain, you know, the lodging they gave her. So she had to explain, well, my first three babies is by a white guy named whatever, and then my second husband was a Black Hawk Indian. Pow, 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 shot they fucking plane out the sky. So out of Union County, Kentucky. Union County, Kentucky. So now she's saying her baby is dark because his father's an Indian. But then you got these motherfuckers telling us we ain't Indian because we dark. Uh, hold up. Hold up. Then you tell us that we ain't Indians because our hair is nappy. And they talking about, hey, something different about that last baby, that papoose you got. His hair's kind of kinky. He look a little chocolatey. He don't look so... Oh, yeah, his father's Black Hawk Indian. Oh, once they said that, they left the... You read the story for yourself. Now it's the other way around. You can't be who you say you are because you got this dark skin complexion. This motherfucker's bugged out, yo. They bugged out. And again, they want what they're not willing to give. They want what they not. They want justice, but they don't want to give it. To break a motherfucking neck for rolling their eyes at you, stepping on your Jordans and all this other shit. Got no smoke for the oppressor. When them motherfuckers is like, such and such, we're offering you five years. I, I ain't not one of these niggas said, nah, I ain't doing five, son. I'll give you one, which would have gave them time served. They don't do that. That's an offer. If I say, yo, take this motherfucking heroin, you be like, hey, I don't do heroin. I don't want that, but you got any weed? That's an offer. So that means the heroin's now off the table because he counter offered with some weed. So now, why are you trying? Hold on. You want me to do five years? No, you do five years. The judge orders you. Did you, did you charge them? Because when you go somewhere, you go to Target or you go to Pizza Hut and you order a pizza, they charge you. So when the judge orders you, do you charge the judge? Oh, that shit. Oh, shit. The PhDs don't know that? The accountants don't know that? Finance 101, business math 101. They charging your account, that social security number. Are you motherfuckers still putting that social security number? Are you arguing with people? I don't care if you're going to apply for food stamps, if you're going to the WIC office, you're going to apply for a job. It's not your problem. That's human capital and resources problem to figure out what to do when you don't want to give a social security number. How you think they handle, oh, uh, they hire Manuel and, and Jorge with no social security number. You think there's no way to do it? Well, I can't get the job if I don't use the social. You motherfucker, look at the back of that social security card. Everybody's social security card got a red account number on the back. Got an account number. That's an account number. You ain't got no access to it, but that's a damn account number to one of those 12 Federal Reserves. San Francisco, Georgia, a couple other places. Those are the ones that stick out in my mind because I've always been around them. If you look on Fidelity, you can put in your Social Security number and you can find out how much the government has made off of your ass. These motherfuckers talking about their tax dollars paying for prison inmates and shit like that. Like, this is active slavery. Are you fucking kidding me? Them prisoners be working hard, too. Their body is already the collateral, so their debt is paid already. The minute that they are not free to walk about and go into their pursuit of happiness, they have already started paying down society that they're already agreed to and they're saying that they owe. So how dare these people think that they don't deserve a raise from 12 cents a day, but you got an illegal immigrant that'll come here and make minimum wage. Nobody has no objections to that, but when it comes down to paying these inmates a little more for the ones that don't got no family, for the uppity ones whose family think they too good because Curtis must have did something wrong or else his ass wouldn't have been in jail, that'll learn them, let them stay there. All that fake ass tough love you got for your own, you don't got that shit for your oppressor and it makes me sick. Makes me sick.
does it does it makes me sick i can't even act like it don't so there's certain conversations you're not going to want to have with me because my response is not going to be like your typical so-called black person i'm gonna be an indian and i'm gonna be hard and i'm gonna be consistent and i'm gonna be serious I don't think like that no more. I don't think like uh, a colonized mind. Oh, the woe is me to where it's so bad that I can't think my way out of a paper bag that I'm going to go back to some shit I can't prove. Looking up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. Oh, shit. It ain't nothing but more problems coming down because ain't no Jesus coming to do a motherfucking thing. Jesus is going to stop me from talking to my oppressors, having a conversation, making fucking negotiable terms with these fucking offers and positions that they trying to put me in. I got a problem with that. I'll elbow the shit out that nigga. I'll drop kick Jesus. Roundhouse kick. John claude Van Damme. Blood sport. Headbutt that nigga. It's okay. The blood of just the blood of Jesus cures everything anyway, right? Ain't that what these motherfuckers say? What would they do if they see me headbutt that nigga? You know what? If that nigga was real, they would kill him anyway. Cause that's what that's what that's what that's what black people like to do. They like killing their own. Killing their own and being a victim. Niggas seen Jesus running down the block. Them same people that have been giving up. And why come the preacher can't have a nice car? If Jesus walked down the block, they'd assault that nigga. They'd assault him. He wasn't as fucking weak and dumb like these motherfuckers. Oh, he forgives everybody. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He said, who touched my coat? Be wrong to give the children's food to a dog. What's a female dog? A bitch. That's what Jesus was saying. Oh, watch your mouth. Oh, no, no, no. Jesus was a fucking foul mouth nigga too. Very austere man walking in there. Look at the story. Don't look at the dogma, the fantasy part of it. That nigga walked in the temple like, bow, smacking shit over. Y'all not taking the Lord serious. This how it is with you niggas not taking being an Indian serious. The same thing. So now I can get in y'all level, get in y'all book, get in the language to which you understand, and I can use it against you to show you you don't know what the fuck you reading, what you talking about, what you doing. And then you want to get mad. Phoenix, you're so rough. You're so abrasive. Oh, the pugnacity. And da 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 And all this other shit. Getting bumped upside your head from a motherfucking cop while you was walking down the block while being black. Not really committing a crime. What's harsher than that? Nothing on that elbow to your throat. You ain't had that much to talk about when they throw that elbow to your throat or got their boots in your damn neck. Or they frisking your grandma and rubbing her up and shit on a fucking simple traffic stop. Got grandma out to the side of the fucking road. You ain't going to do nothing that. When they pull your own fucking mama and grandmother over, you worried about how rough Phoenix talk. Oh, damn. She be cursing a lot. She be cursing a lot. Man, y'all be putting spells on yourselves. Don't worry about my cuss words. I ain't cursing nobody. I'm setting niggas free. Left and right. It's the difference between a cuss and a curse. Didn't Jesus go in the temple cursing? You ain't say, oh, Jesus shouldn't have went in there. Nobody never questioned that shit. Jesus went in there cursing and swearing in the temple, knocking shit over and all this stuff. You never say, oh, Jesus shouldn't have did that. Oh, he was in there wilding. They ain't never, Christians don't talk about that shit. Trust not in oppression, say of the Lord. Oh, you know they, you know how they do black people. That means you just left church and you don't believe what you just read regarding the same nigga you say you love the Lord. The Lord say trust not in the yes and your no be your no. You don't feel that same way when a goddamn oppressor come. You ain't the same way. You trust in oppression and you want everybody else to trust in oppression too. And with that being said, you're fucking with my First Amendment rights to where your religion is fucking up my world. It's damaging what I got going on and it's fucking with my pursuit of happiness. And damn it, I'm not with it. What you gonna do? You better do something. Because that, that list with that petition, that shit building up. It's about to be 20 miles of bad road. A bunch of people that's sick of the goddamn churches, sick of the goddamn pastors with their hands out, sick of seeing homeless people, hungry people, right outside the door of these fucking places. Right outside the door. Can't get no medical attention. But the pastor need a new roof. Why come? The preacher can't have a nice car. Why this nigga can't have a roof over his head? 
Why this man been sleeping out here and y'all act funny and the church got fried chicken going on and sister sissy and they're selling dinners and y'all ain't invite the people off the street to come and eat. It's the shit y'all do. Hip face. I ain't afraid to say it. I don't know why they got me all charged up and why all of these things come to me, but it must need to be said. I ain't going to fight it. I kept trying to fight it and shit was happening to me. Now I keep it as real as possible. Will it? And I'd fucking like to, and I'm feeling great. Got no obstacles in my way, except these motherfuckers that look like me. So I need to make it very clear when I start steamrolling, I want to hear that. Oh, you're doing that to your own. My own been doing it to me. I'm not having it. These monkey ass niggas ain't going to be getting over. Not with their opinions. Not with their uh, indirect abuses and shit like that. Not with none of that. These niggas keep thinking they're going to bump into these all these bitches that ain't had no daddy. That ain't the case. Some of us had a daddy. And we're going to put y'all lame niggas to the motherfucking test. You say you all of this shit? Well, nigga, prove it. Because my daddy never left me hanging. Never. Never felt unsafe on my dad's watch. My, my uncles worshiped the ground my grandma walked on. They treat all my aunts and shit special. So I don't really know what it's like getting abused by a bunch of these niggas and shit. But I'm telling you, the minute that I see it, you may not think of it because it's a dumb bitch that's going to let you niggas keep doing that. It's a dumb bitch that's okay with it. Phoenix not. Phoenix not. Because I got standards and I got a son. I'll be damned if my son seeing me getting disrespected by a nigga and he growing up with a complex. Now it's a nigga that he looking at coming out my bedroom and he can't wait to be a grown man so he can whip that nigga's ass, right? Same nigga eating up my kid's motherfucking cereal or, or drinking up the last of the fucking milk, shit like that, right? Playing my son PlayStation and shit. This is what these bitches be doing. My son ain't never have to worry about none of that. Never have to worry about none of that. That's why he out here... Look at being selective with the type of wife he want to choose, right? He's being selective because he needs somebody close to me and my mom's, close to the way his aunts and his grandmothers and stuff is like, right? That's the type of shit he like. He like making ladies feel good about being ladies, but you're going to treat my son like a man. See, now some of these bitches done raised their daughters wrong, and some of these niggas was not in their daughter's life, so now I'm going to have to be selective with the type of women that's handling my son, right? Because if you think you're going to manipulate him, me and his sister going to be on you like a cheap suit. See, it kind of go both ways. He could protect me from some of you girls. Goons that got a disrespectful mouth. Y'all keep forgetting I got a son that's almost 30. Y'all keep forgetting that. I know I'll be looking young, but yeah, I got a son that's a couple years away from being 30. Okay, worry about how my son think. Worry about how he think. He got my back. I got his. Same thing with my daughter. I gotta, I gotta pick the dude. I gotta pick him. Oh, uh, you gotta come sit down with mom first. You gotta come sit down with me and my sister. We gotta, we got there's a lot of questions involved. We got a whole questionnaire. You know what I'm saying? Can't take up with the foreigners. We gotta make sure we deal with our own people in our own way. Nothing wrong with it. Niggas talk about racism ain't never going away. Nigga, it's not going away. It ain't supposed to. Everybody's family is supposed to feel the same way about competing on a global scale to get to the top. The upper echelon, that is the same desire of everybody, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, any of these families, the Trumps, any of these families that are in power, the so-called protected their families, and they've done it through racism, actively, currently, in the past, in the future, forever. Keep telling these people with these PhDs, you ain't really that bright, boo. You spend a lot of time trying to tell me I'm dumb, but you ain't really that bright if you don't know that race is your son, your daughter, your aunt, your uncle, your cousin, your grandmother, your parents. That's your race. That's your stock. Those are the people that went on the stock market. That is the wealth of the world, the gold and the silver. Oh, you Christians don't know who's the gold and the silver? It be you. 
It could be you, but you don't want to get off the slave ship. This could be us chilling with the B-boy stands, but you don't want to get off the slave ship. You thought you was doing something going to college with the scholarship, but now your fucking battleship is sinking. They got you out there in that deep water. And come hella high water, you're going to pay them student loans. Y'all like like how I flipped that, right? Talk about your taxpayers. The tax money goes to the Holy See. You know the Holy See is? The Vatican. Your tax dollars go to make the Vatican rich. People over there in Rome, they living it up. We run the free world and ain't none of half these niggas free in it. The free world is right here. The old world, which they like to call the new world. But it looked like to me, they just now colonizing all these other places that they didn't act like they hit and conquered, but it's still fully populated with all their people. You mean they just, how long did it take the Japanese, the Chinese to recover from the Japanese colonizing now? How long did it take to recover? How did Africa become an all so-called predominantly black continent all over again that quick if they done kidnapped every fucking body they done kidnapped everybody off the continent sent them all over the world but yet all of them is still in power there's no donald trump signing no bills and laws over there ain't no donald trump took over no edi means throne To no Mike Pence type motherfucker. Oh, they robbing Africa. Get the fuck out of here. They ain't robbing them. They robbing me. They robbing me. Nigga, corn rolls is American. There wasn't no goddamn corn over there. They took our fucking industry and now they come do what? Sell it back to us. Then they sit there and you in their shop. They got roaches crawling all over the fucking place. They spitting on the corner of the floor. Then they start speaking in French. And then they see you with your own nigga and want to start popping off your edges, braiding your edges mad tight. Next thing you know, you saluting from behind your fucking ear because they want to fuck your edges up and shit like that. Got to be careful. Let's keep it real. You stop me when I'm lying. They ain't got to like what I'm saying, but stop me when I'm motherfucking lying. They'll fuck your edges up. You go to the Dominicans, they have your hair all soft and shit like that and flowing. You go to them and feel like they done washed their shit with ivory snow. With ivory soap, just mad coarse and hard and shit like that. Fucking braiding your edges, got your braids so tight, your eyes is like this, you can't cuss and shit. $85, $125. We don't buy girls, the baby dolls no more so they can learn how to cornrow. Oh, it's so serious. Well, now we still got to go to the farm and up to go and get our services done. The beauty parlor is our industry. The barbershop is an American Negro industry. They was making y'all niggas cut y'all hair. And then once they did, y'all had to make it look good. So what y'all do? Y'all learn how to take the guard down and give yourself the fade. And then everybody else wanted to be like y'all. They want to be like our men. We done did all the nurturing. We done did all the coddling. We done did all of positive reinforcements. We know the world tried to kick y'all ass. We tried to do our best to help y'all niggas. But God damn it, you ain't going to fight us to protect your asses now or to be by your side right now. And if you can't get it going, we're going to get it going. Don't worry about our masculine energy. Hopefully, it'll come back to you when it's time to. But if that energy has now transferred and it has made the bulk of your people powerful, then fucking accept it. If they put all this energy into a goddamn turtle, you'd be mad about that too. Oh, them turtles acting tough. Them turtles don't know how to stay in the turtle's place. The turtle should be cooking. The turtle should be doing this. The turtle should be home raising kids. The turtle, the turtle. It'll be all of that. Be the same shit. Turtle, turtle, turtle. Be the same shit. Be the same shit. Be the same shit. We got to do better. 
You come in my store, you want to jip me and jew me down and say, hey, why I got to pay $15 for this? Come on, Phoenix, let me get it for 10 But you go in that Gucci store and they making Negro shirts out of your ass. Because Africans, they ain't never teased them Africans. Notice this. They have never teased lips and the, the little beady bees. They've never teased them. It's only been the American that they've done that to. They ain't never been over there calling them niggas no jigaboos and spear chuckers. They ain't never said it to their face. You better not say it to a motherfucker that wrestled gorillas and eat goddamn hyenas. Them motherfuckers barbecue gorillas over there. You think them white people was going over there saying that? Absolutely not. But nigga go in the Gucci store and go buy that motherfucking sweater with the big old, you know, the big old uh, yes a boss lips, the Amos and Andy lips and shit. The pickaninny look. They still mocking the Indian. Gucci mocking the fuck out the Indian. Niggas is mad. Talk about, look at what they saying about black people, bitch. They talking about the Indian. Stay in your black lane. This shit crazy, yo. This shit crazy, man. Got to do something about this shit, yo. Got to do something about this. I'm going to read y'all the comment this lady said. It was very fucking hurtful. Like, you mad over a fucking dollar? Are you kidding me? You got niggas selling you nationality packages. Niggas got you giving up your fucking deeds to your land that you ain't even fucking been to. And you mad over paying a dollar for a guy that tells you how to find your land and your genealogy? Yo, y'all niggas got a lot of nerve. You ain't sitting here telling Mark Zuckerberg nothing. You ain't telling him nothing why you got to buy credits to promote your business. You ain't telling Mark Zuckerberg nothing. You ain't saying nothing to Alphabet over there beefing on YouTube. You ain't telling ABC nothing when they show you commercials all goddamn day about shit you can't fucking afford, things that you got on your goddamn wish list. But you want to talk shit about A4 Pure. Blood, sweat, and tears went into that. That's Indian made, and y'all still mad. At your own industry. But you okay when these pilgrims want to sell it right back to you. Niggas is fraudulent. I don't let niggas drop links. Everybody's fucking business. Now here it go with this entity. And niggas is acting like, it's Phoenix suspect now. She's selling genealogy for a dollar. This is a dollar, yo. Fuck that. I ain't giving no my dollar. I ain't giving no my dollar. I'm just going to go sit there and criticize and shit like that. Sit there and talk shit. Ain't even signed in, ain't even logged in. You go buy that goddamn $500 Gucci t-shirt with them nigga lips all on it, but you won't buy your Phoenix Moon, no grandma killer t-shirt for 20 fucking bucks. Guess what? We, everybody at A4, we got a platform. We don't got to deal with this. We can leave Facebook. We can leave YouTube tomorrow. Now we got our own shit. So whether you there or not, the people that want to be there can. You don't, you don't never got to hear from us publicly, ever. We could obscure, drift off into obscurity and wait till they shut down all your other little white programs y'all into. And you ain't got no choice but deal with your Indian folks. Nobody wants to bail. Everybody want to be a boss. Ain't no little eyes, uh, no, no big eyes and little U's. All this information niggas give away for free consistently for years. Telling motherfuckers how to file claims. Everything from under the sun. All of this information that most of these motherfuckers ignored. And now you got these other motherfuckers coming in. Still regurgitating our shit. We regurgitating our shit. We said a lot of this stuff three years ago. Nobody would listen. Now we got a little bit of motherfuckers' attention. And these niggas want to take our old shit and make it seem like it's theirs. After we done did everything to get the momentum going, right? Was doing the Jackie Joyner cursing. We was trying to pass the motherfucker, right? All up out of breath and shit, had to pass that baton. And now we trying to run a good race. And you got niggas sticking their fucking feet out, man. Suck something. Dead wrong. Then you got the impulsive motherfuckers that got these little... Little minuscule things going on, and instead of sitting in the library for a day or two, 
trying to put down a couple of little lists. Um, uh, and I'm, we've said this on numerous occasions. We tell people this, but because we get into other topics and shit, it's like we got to baby step niggas. Okay, we got to just keep talking about this and we're going to stay on this topic until everybody gets it before we can move on. No! Your teacher in school ain't do that. Nigga, if you couldn't get fractions, the motherfucker, they on the trigonometry now. You gonna get a tutor on the side and do it on your own time. But that teacher ain't gonna stop teaching the rest of the class the calculus and the trigonometry because your ass ain't getting get the goddamn fractions and algebra. Your child that fucking special. Some of you niggas really think y'all that special. Not humble enough to be supportive, not humble enough to say you need help, and not humble enough to take charge in the areas where you're strong at, where you shouldn't have to be told what to do because you know what to do. And if you know what to do, then take your responsibility seriously and go for it and apply it. Don't look for no accolades, nigga, because when somebody's like, well, damn, we need this and this and that. Oh, such and such got that. Boom, that's when you're going to be useful. So whether you built something five years ago, if it's just now making sense to people and it's just now popping, just like, um, what's that shit? The ring, right? The, 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 the device that goes on your door and you can see the camera, you can look on your phone and see the UPS man bringing your package and all this other shit, right? So that thing got passed up on Shark Tank. All of them passed it over. And you know who invested in it? Nas. Nas invested in it. And now, boom. The ring is everything. Nobody was fucking with Microsoft when it first came out. Nobody fucked with so stuck on the iOS, on the DOS system with Apple and all that shit. They did Microsoft. They was leery of that shit, right? Look at Microsoft now. So don't worry about the things that they don't respond to because after they done whoring around, going everywhere else, slobbing knobs and all these other foreigners, they're going to have to come back and they're going to kiss the ring or suck the pinky toe. One or the other. But if you got some talent, you got an area where you're useful, then goddamn hone them skills. If you make it good at making knives, nigga, be the best knife maker. Maybe nobody's shouting you out now, but when it's ready time for war, oh, let's call the knife maker. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. If you getting ready just so you could be called on, we don't really need you, nigga. You gonna be holding that shit over our head like you... I did for y'all. Nigga, did you do it for y'all? Did you do it because it had to be done? See, there's a fucking difference. There's a difference. There's a fucking difference. What up, Hija? What's happening, beloved? Kayshawn. One of the realest niggas on the planet, y'all. I love Kayshawn. I love your energy, man. I love your energy. I'm telling you, you like the fucking brother I grew up with next door. I would have beat up all the girls in junior high school for stepping on your fucking British Knights, nigga. <laughs> That's what I fucking do. I love that nigga fire. I love his fire. Love his fire. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, yo, I'm, I'm telling y'all, yo, it's got to be better, man. But... Everybody that's privy to that shit with them pan fries, you rub that shit in that nigga Garfield face. Rub that shit in his face. He want to be a fucking exposer, nigga. Expose us. Expose the fact that you got trolled for five years. If y'all listen to them videos, that bitch ass nigga called up there. Yeah, hey, Phoenix. Oh, this is Garfield. You know me. Like, yeah, we always going at it. Me and my girl, Christina Carter. Who? 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 Double barrel this nigga. Bung. Hit that nigga with both the kids. <laughs> he did it twice. Then when I got, did the interview with Jabari, this nigga did the same thing. He called up there, yeah, because you know Christina Carter, the first lady of the Dagger Squad, and da 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 da. Nigga beating on his chest like Donkey Kong and shit. Now he wants to stick his head in the fucking dirt like an ostrich, right? Duck ass nigga. <laughs> Take me to your leader. <laughs> <laughs> yo, these things is crazy. They be getting that shit going, yo. These motherfuckers got a lot of stock, a lot of shit invested in all these motherfucking clowns, yo. This shit be funny as fuck. All y'all heroes, you gonna see that they bedwetters. They're not brave at all. They ain't killing shit and they ain't letting nothing die. Y'all gonna have full of disappointments for all the shit these motherfuckers is still believing in because they believe in everything but their own people better yet themselves. That's a fucking problem. Ain't nothing gonna get better as long as that shit is happening like that. Right? 
I might not even like uh, certain shit, but if I see one of my brothers or sisters promoting it and it's not harmful to people, oh, you best believe I'm going to mention it. You best believe I'm going to send a reference. I'm going to send them your way. I'm going to send them your way. I'm going to send them your way. Because that's the right thing to do. It should be some reciprocity in that motherfucker. Should be some reciprocity in that motherfucker. And I'm going to tell you the truth. Some of the most valuable Indians we got on our teams, right? Niggas don't like them. I'm glad you don't like my niggas. They not here for the liking. The bitches is pretty, like us. Like us, but don't touch us. But the niggas, you don't need to like them because if you violate us, they gonna smash your melon. That's right, don't like the nigga that's gonna drop them bows on you when you acting out of order. Don't like everybody, you don't have to. You already know that if you cross this motherfucking line, that ill nigga gonna spite your motherfucking head off and he ain't spitting out nothing. He chewing the bones of everything, what's happening? They don't gotta like all my peoples, I don't give a fuck. But you better not say nothing bad about them. You better watch how you're talking about them. Yeah, you don't get to do that with me. You don't get to do that. Not around me. They won't be talking no shit about you around me. I'm like, hey, such and such. Oh, you want to tell such and such what you was just saying about them? Yeah, my brother Kumar was famous for that. He ain't never let nobody talk about you behind your back. You know, he ain't doing that. Yo, yo, tell that nigga what you just said about him, Phoenix. What's all that shit you was popping, right? Oh, when I see Raheem, I'm going to do this and this and that. Here come Raheem right now. <laughs> Remember in Juice? <laughs> Remember the movie Juice? They was like, there go Raheem right now. Yeah. One of them type of situations, yo. But I'm telling y'all, stop letting these people play with y'all, man. Stop letting them play with y'all. It's time to get active. Don't be afraid. It's time to get active. It ain't going to hurt you to try and get physically fit. I don't care if you paralyze from the legs down. Move your arms. Keep your arms strong. Keep your arms strong. Okay? Don't wear high heels. Strengthen up something in some of these areas. But all the fronting, all that shit's got to stop. You can't have the champagne taste with the beer pockets. You can't do that. You can't do that. This is a lot of shit that got to be cut out. Prioritize. Prioritize. This way you ain't got nobody to be mad at. And when it's time to be active, you're going to be so loopy, can't nobody tell you nothing. And for all the motherfuckers that wouldn't listen to you, guess what? They're going to do a lot. They're going to break their neck. They're going to try to make an impression to get into your good graces. The same motherfuckers that wouldn't listen to you telling you, hey, listen to grandma. Didn't grandma say they like, fuck that, grandma. I mean, you know what she's talking about? Nigga, we this, we that, you this and you that. Like it or not, your ass is after. Them same motherfuckers gonna be like, yo, cuz, I got pulled over. So, can you help me? And then that's gonna show what type of character you got. Cause the same person that wasn't giving you the time of day, your chief skills or your leadership skills are gonna have to come into play because they still your folks. Are you gonna help them or are you gonna lead them on Exile Island? It's gotta be some sort of balance because there may be some things them motherfuckers need to be on Exile Island and you keep them there, right? Keep them there. As a chief, it's your responsibility, too, to cut off all danger from your people, too. Don't forget. Some of these niggas forget. And then it's the humble nigga that do the most and ain't nobody looking at him to be a chief. That's the nigga I'm going to elect. That's the one that I would get, would get my vote. The one that thinks for everybody, selflessly. Not the nigga that's, I mean mine. And yeah, I, I, I. Some shit, yo. Some shit. Shit. And then meanwhile, it's the one that's quiet and humble in the background, putting in the most motherfucking work. And these niggas just take it all for granted and shit like that. Don't even realize it. Don't even realize it. Just know they're going to come at all angles. They're going to come at all angles. They're going to come right with the feathers now. They're going to come with the grandma stories, but they still going to mix it in with being gad. You niggas going to be the tribe 
the gad still, these motherfuckers still, and everything still started in Africa, is always going to go back to them same narratives that leave the ship and then go start joining themselves to Moors and stuff like that. They never really believed in grandma in the first place. There's an inkling uh, uh, of doubt still lingering over them that troubles their souls to where they still making these fucked up decisions, snap decisions to try and combat something that the Indian already got solution, remedy, and cure for. Never understand that shit. You motherfuckers don't tell me the Civil Rights Act don't work. You ain't never fucking used it. Y'all stand on, I'm black, and they doing this because I'm black. That's what you saying. But the law said they can't persecute Indians. They said a black man got no rights, which a white man is bound to respect. So that means that whether you believe that nigga's a white man or not, he's classified that way and he got power over you, black man. Why would you call yourself dizzy? Why would you call yourself homeless and unattached to any land, any place, void of light, sullen, dirty, wicked, evil? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's a personal choice. And with those choices comes consequences. You know, you put your hand in the fire, the shit gonna burn you. Straight like that. It's the same shit. You take it how you want to take it. I don't need to convince you to change this shit from being black. My daddy was black. My mama was black. I'm fine being black. That's great. That's great. But just know that there's a chance that the behavior of your black child might cause my Indian grandchild to have to whip your child's ass for not being in their motherfucking proper place or trying to exclude mine from enjoying what he was rightfully his. That's fact. That's facts. And sometimes violence be the only shit a motherfucker understand. I mean, go ahead and act like I'm lying with that shit. Sometimes a motherfucker get his wig split. He's thinking a little different. He ain't feeling quite the fucking same that he was. He ain't got that same energy no more. All that shit he was talking after he's sitting there leaking and shit. I don't want to fight no more, Gina. Change up. Switches up. So we're not going to act like, you know, there ain't going to be no reason to be fucking busting nobody's head and shit. Because that ain't true. That's a lie. We ain't giving up no false narratives. You ain't stop telling these kids about fucking Santa Claus and no fucking Easter Bunny and no goddamn Tooth Fairy. Tell them the fucking truth. No, it's not that white people don't like black people, baby. They don't like stupid people that can't self-govern. And anybody that can't self-govern has to be told what to do. They don't get a fucking choice because they couldn't make a decision on their own any fucking way. Straight like that. You can't decide. Mama going to pick out your outfit. If she tell you, go get you something, get you something you like, baby, and you too long and you lingering, mama coming back, look, I got these Levi's and I got this polo shirt, nigga. Come on, we ready. We getting out the motherfucking store. And guess what? You going to wear that polo shirt. And then when you get it, everybody going to tell you you look nice anyway. Because the shit you put, picked out was a little old swishy suit, little wrinkled ass suit and shit like that. Didn't even have a matching bottom, right? But now mama got you looking right, all cleaned up and spiffy and shit like that. If you can't make a fucking decision, it'll be made for you. And if you don't like that, then go over there where the governless people are. There's places where governless people can be. And that's in that black pool. You chose that. We're disconnected from it. We have a right to do so. And you're going to stop fucking interfering with the Indians' right to do it. The fuck they exercise their rights, liberties, and freedoms in this land just like every fucking body else gets to do it. You're going to stop interrupting this process. But unless you want your head bust. I don't mind. I could do this shit as long as I got strength in my body. I like busting ass anyway. I like getting it in. I had to push it. I was on, <laughs> I was on the phone with Tom Hawk Tony. I was so mad. This dude just kept, and I smelt his finger. No lie. He really like reached over. When I tell you his arm went like that, he's trying to cut me off. I'm already at the counter. And he wants to put 50 cent on the counter so that the I could give him a Lucy. Nigga, you got to wait till my transaction's done. There was a brother in front of me. He was all reaching in between me and the brother. And the brother finished his transaction. And he told the guy, he said, dude, you got to slow down. We both said it politely. I was like, oh, baby, I'm not done with my transaction. One second, honey. I'm very polite. And then I'll go back to this. And mind you, I'm on the phone, being on the phone when I'm transacting money. I think I give him a $5 bill and I really get a nigga 100 Then I come back and make him pull the cameras and all that. And... You know what I'm saying? Like shit like that. So I got like, I need to, I need to be focused when I'm doing the transaction and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? They ain't on the phone when you hitting the lick nowhere. Why would I do it while I'm spending my money in the store? 
So the dude reaches his hand past me, but this time his fucking skin went across the hood of my coat, my face, all of this happened. Whoosh. That means he was way too close. And then his fingers smelled like butt. His fingers smelled like ass. I shouldn't have smelled that shit. And when I and when I did, I just turned around and hit him with the two hand touch. The whoosh. I pushed that nigga in the whole rack of chips. Then the fucking Arab dude is telling him, don't be disrespectful. You can't be doing that. To I told you to leave that lady alone. She told you to leave her alone. She's not no woman or child. If she Did you see how she pushed me? She can't be a woman or a child. Now you act like you want to call the cops and all this other shit. But the Arab nigga was like, you call the cops, I'm going to tell them that. You know, you tried to basically depot this sister. Like, he was ready to back me up. Like, I told you, you can't be coming in here doing that. If that was my mother, and then the other Arabs was coming from around the corner, like, yo, dude, you got to get out of here. See? Fucked up how these Arabs was protecting me, but guess what? It was two other brown niggas in the store, and what they do? They sitting there scratching their scratch-offs while I'm getting assaulted by the nigga with the stinky butt index finger. <sighs> Good thing I know how to fucking protect myself, yo. I'm so glad I grew up with uncles and brothers and cousins and shit like that. You know, they used to, like, slap box. We had to play the two-hand touch football and stuff. So I'm not really a, a, a soft chick. I did play with the Barbie dolls and shit like that, but I really liked running. I really liked being active. I liked playing stickball. You know what I'm saying? I like doing shit like that. I like the two-hand touch football and shit like that. That was, I, I enjoyed it. I ain't going to act like that. But I'm glad I ain't no punk and I know how to fucking not get smacked the fuck around. I don't know. I love y'all. I ain't gonna hold y'all too tough. But um, anything, everything, man. But don't let them pan fives get away with that shit. Garfield, don't fucking tuck your hyena tail in the dirt, nigga. Roar like the lion you was before they found out that this bitch was a whole catfish, nigga. And guess what? Ain't no cat freaking too, motherfucker. Chapisa Lachike.